propaganda. We've seen it at play with Israel's war in Gaza. We've witnessed the battle to spread misinformation and those who want to spread the truth. We have witnessed how money plays a significant role in trying to control the narrative. We have seen people suffer consequences for speaking out against atrocities and for standing with victims and the oppressed. And the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses are masters of propaganda and trying to cover up the truth. The Oxford English Dictionary provides several definitions for propaganda. Number one, an organization, scheme, or movement for the propagation of a particular doctrine, practice, etc. Now, this definition emphasizes the historical meaning of propaganda, which was originally associated with the dissemination of religious or philosophical beliefs. Number two, the systematic dissemination of information, especially as a political strategy, persuasion by means of propaganda. Now, this definition focuses on the modern usage of propaganda, which is often associated with political manipulation and the spread of one-sided information. The Oxford English Dictionary also provides several examples of propaganda, including Posters and pamphlets used to promote a political party or cause. Speeches and broadcasts designed to influence public opinion. News articles and documentaries that present a biased viewpoint. It is important to note that the word propaganda has a negative connotation and is often used to describe information that is false or misleading. With that being said, The Watchtower has published articles and videos about propaganda. Videos like this one. So we need to take Jehovah at his word. He is the one who tells the truth, and he wants us to believe that he loves us individually. Another method that was in that list, in the index, that Satan uses to deceive people is propaganda. That is false, biased, or deceptive information used to manipulate the way we think. The first reference shown in the index for propaganda is an article in the Watchtower that we are currently studying an article entitled, Winning the Battle for Your Mind. And it begins, You are under attack, and your chief enemy, Satan, is using a very dangerous weapon against you. What is it? Propaganda. A weapon specially designed to attack, not your body, but your mind. Satan can use any part of his wicked system of things to disseminate his lies. And his objective is to weaken our faith and morals, to stir up contentions between us, and to undermine our confidence in the leadership that God is providing us. How can we resist? The article says, Jesus gave this simple rule for combating propaganda. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In the Bible, we can find all we need to combat Satan's propaganda, provided we're diligent in carefully examining the scriptures daily, and we use our God-given abilities and power of reason to make the truth our own. Now, a second thing we can do to combat this method of the devils is to keep in mind that Satan does not want us to think clearly or reason things out well. So never be content passively to blindly accept what you hear from politicians, the news media, the internet, because Satan is the master of fake news. And the article concludes, have you ever watched a film in which, from your vantage point in the audience, you can clearly see that someone is being deceived and manipulated? Did you find yourself thinking, don't believe it, they're lying to you? Imagine, then, the angel shouting the same message to you. Don't be fooled by Satan's lies. Shut your ears, then, to Satan's propaganda. Listen to Jehovah and trust in him. The article referenced in the video is the Watchtower Study article of July 2017. Now, the article is entitled, Winning the Battle for Your Mind. There are quite a few contradictions in an irony in winning the battle for your mind, this article. It pro uh, provides several examples of contradictions and irony that highlight the cultish nature of Jehovah's Witnesses. So let's look at a few of the contradictions uh, in, in this article. Well, it says, number one, demanding critical thinking while denouncing external sources. 
And let's take a few quotes from the article. Number one, to win the battle against Satan's propaganda, you must recognize how dangerous it is and then protect yourself from it. That's paragraph six. It also states, do not simply believe everything you hear without thinking carefully about it. Paragraph 16. Do not be tricked by the evil schemes of the devil. It is not enough to have a basic understanding of the truth. We need to work hard to deepen our knowledge of the truth. That's in paragraph 12 of the article. And then Satan uses the world he controls to distract us and discourage us from reading and studying the Bible, which is also paragraph 12. Now, the article warns against believing everything you hear without thinking critically. However, it simultaneously discourages examining information from outside sources, labeling them as Satan's propaganda. Now, this creates a contradiction as critical thinking often requires considering diverse perspectives. Number two is claiming superiority while fearing external influence. Right, so here are a few quotes from the article. You are under attack. The enemy is Satan, and the weapon he is using is very powerful. That's in paragraph one. Another quote says, The Apostle Paul knew that Satan's propaganda was very dangerous, in paragraph two. And then, to win the battle of your mind, you must recognize how dangerous propaganda is and then protect yourself from it. That's in paragraph six. And then, uh, we can compare it to a poisonous gas that we cannot see or smell, paragraph seven. Also states that Satan has blinded the minds of so many people with his propaganda that he is now misleading the entire habited earth in paragraph 9. The article repeatedly emphasizes the strength and unity of Jehovah's Witnesses, yet it portrays them as vulnerable to manipulation and constantly under attack from Satan's propaganda. Now this paints a contradictory picture of a confident group easily swayed by external forces. And the third instance is promoting loyalty to imperfect leaders. So what are the, some of the quotes there are, do not be fooled, follow the advice of God's word and remain united with your brothers, paragraph 18. Uh, another one says, continue in the things that you've learned and remember from whom you learned them, paragraph 19. Another one says, be determined to remain in Jehovah's organization. Continue to be loyal and to support the men who are leading God's people, even though these men are imperfect. Paragraph 20. The article encouraged unwavering loyalty to Jehovah's organization and its leaders, even though it acknowledges their imperfections. This contradicts the principle of critical thinking and independent judgment. Now let's look at the irony contained in the article. The first one is, it accuses others of propaganda while using propaganda. The article itself is a form of propaganda using fear tactics and emotionally charged language to manipulate the reader into accepting its message without questioning it. This creates an ironic situation where the article criticizes others for doing what it does itself. The second instance is, propaganda is inaccurate or misleading information that is used to trick people or control the way they think and act. That's in paragraph 4. It says, do not simply believe everything you hear without thinking carefully about it in paragraph 16. And Satan uses the world he controls to distract us and discourage us from reading and studying the Bible. That's in paragraph 12. Um, he has studied human behavior since man was created, paragraph 8. And then the, the other one says, Job has provided this in his word, the Bible, paragraph 11. It also, this article number in second is, is promotes unity while justifying isolation. The article emphasizes the importance of unity within Jehovah's Witness community. However, it also encourages members to isolate themselves from individuals and information deemed harmful by the organization, contradicting the concept of true unity. And these are instances, uh, quotes from that article, do not be fooled. Follow the advice of God's word and remain united with your brothers. In paragraph 18. Uh, do not lose your trust in those whom Jehovah is using to lead his people. Paragraph 21. Um, and then it goes on to say, apostates and other deceivers may attack the organization 
do not be quickly shaken from your reason, paragraph 19. And then make sure that you are prepared to resist Satan's propaganda. Ask yourself, the last time one of my brothers offended me, did I react in a way that pleased God or that pleased Satan in paragraph 17? The third instance, this article uses fear to promote strength. The article relies heavily on fear of Satan and his propaganda to motivate readers to follow its instructions. This is ironic as it suggests that the organization itself lacks confidence in its ability to win the battle for its members' minds through reason and positive reinforcement. And some instances and quotes from their article say, You are under attack. The enemy is Satan and the weapon he is using is very powerful. Paragraph 1. It goes on to say, Propaganda is very dangerous because it can gradually influence our thinking without our even noticing that in paragraph 7. And then it says, You have studied human behavior since man was created. Paragraph 8. And then Satan has blinded the minds of so many people with his propaganda that he is now misleading the entire inhabited earth. Paragraph 9. And then be completely confident that Jehovah will keep his promise to care for you, give you the power beyond what is normal, and help you resist Satan's attack. Attacks. That's paragraph 24. Now these contradictions and ironies point towards several characteristics of a cult. Number one. It's controlling information. The article promotes limited access to information and discourages questioning uh, the organization's teachings, creating a closed information loop. Number two, blind loyalty. It demands unwavering loyalty to leaders and the organization, regardless of evidence or personal reasoning. And it, it promotes a us versus them mentality. It creates a clear distinction between members and outsiders fostering suspicion and fear of the outside world. And it also promotes emotional manipulation. It uses fear and guilt to control behavior and maintain obedience. So by analyzing these contradictions and ironies, readers can, you can get a clearer understanding of the tactics used by Jehovah's Witnesses to control their members' minds and to maintain a cult-like structure.